At the direction of Mayor Eric Adams, New York City has cleared over 230 of the city's homeless encampments in the past 12 days. However, of those displaced, only five people agreed to seek new housing at a shelter. The new mayor's push to, quote, keep New Yorkers safe and our streets clean started earlier this year when police similarly began clearing out homeless people sheltering in the subway system. Gothamist reports that roughly 48,000 people live in New York City shelters compared to 2,400 living on the streets. Last year, 640 people died while the homeless in New York City, the high, while homeless in New York City, the highest number of deaths recorded since tracking began in 2006 when 162 deaths were reported. Drug-related deaths were the leading cause, spiking 81 percent from 2020. Our rising panel joins us now to weigh in. Alaimi Alorn is a New York City public defender for legal aid and political commentator, and Amy Tarkanian is a Republican strategist and former chairwoman of the Nevada State GOP. Welcome to you both. Good morning. Yeah, thanks for being with us. So Alaimi, I, I see problems often in, in the approach to, obviously we want to find the homeless population, shelters, you know, get them into safer environments. Uh, but practically, you know, isn't it a really Herculean task to accomplish that, given how resistant uh, many of them are to entering shelters or, or other kinds of accommodations? It's not just that they're resistant, it's that they're not able to. Beyond the fact that many of the shelters are completely full, they have stringent uh, requirements that leave the homeless people unable to stay there. They tend to need mailing addresses and all kinds of different requirements that a homeless person is not going to have. Or they need uh, several visits, uh, an entire interview process, and it takes months for them to get into the shelter. So imagine trying to keep in contact with people who are literally leaving in the street and expecting them to, to jump through all these hurdles. Additionally, they lose trust in the system, right? That Department of Homeless Services, uh, believe it or not, has been advised never to provide them with uh, basic necessities like socks and food and blankets because uh, the statement is that it'll discourage them from seeking shelter, but what it really does is discourage their trust and faith in the system to even enter the shelters. On top of the fact that the people who are in the shelters are subjected to violence, sexual assault, being arrested by NYPD and funneled in and out of the system. But what's important for me is Eric Adams doesn't seem to understand that homeless people are New Yorkers and he is responsible for their well-being too. Since he's taken office, he's been committed against waging war against them. The first thing he did was line the subway stations with more NYPD officers to forcibly remove homeless people from the stations, thus forcing them onto the street. And now he's destroying these encampments, which will leave them physically displaced. So it's not just that people aren't accepting shelter, it's, just, it's that it's not an option, which is something he knows. Because he says, oh, he can't force people in the shelters, they legally can't do that. Oh, this, there's a system in place, but he won't leave the encampment. So he's taking them out of the subway He's taken them off the street, so where do they go? And Amy, do, do, as Republicans are kind of con also confronting this, this crisis, how are they responding? Is it, is it purely like we, we, cops need more funding, or is there some grappling within the Republican Party, Republican coalition, of how to actually resolve some of these, uh, some of these problems kind of more structurally? Well, the majority of the Republicans that I have spoken to in regards to this topic uh, is pretty similar. And I, I think actually would be across the board, uh, despite party affiliation, is uh, just like she said, homeless people, they're still people. They're still citizens of the area that they reside. And whether if it be under a roof or under a cardboard box roof, they're still human beings. And I don't see a problem with people who are making that choice to be homeless, because let's be real, there are people who do make that choice. As long as they're not doing drugs, um, as long as they aren't, you know, sleeping in front of a place of business where you have to, you know, step over, or as long as they're not defecating on the streets, um, you know, I don't have a problem if that's the way that they choose to live. Here in Nevada, we are actually ranked ninth um, in the nation for homelessness. And you can actually find, it's really sad, um, hundreds if not thousands of people that live in an underground city in the sewage underneath the Las Vegas Strip. And that's also not a way for people to live. And I think what we need to do, and I would hope that Mayor Adams is going to go this route, is put more money maybe towards mental health facilities. And also just like what she said, um, my panelist, uh, I had, used to sit on a board called Lutheran Social Services. And what their goal was, was to uh, help individuals become citizens once again that 
were able to get a job, were able to track down their birth certificate so that way they can also get a an ID, so that way they can learn how to function once again and hopefully even get off if there is an addiction or if there's depression or any kind of uh, medical issue that may be uh, needed to attend to. And I think we need to start seeing more of those facilities, but then also compile them maybe all into one area so that way it's like a one-stop shop because obviously these people don't have transportation unless it's public so you can't kick them off of public transportation if that's where they're headed in order to get help well right the challenge uh, alimi look i have become more cognizant of uh, the problems of of having an out of control homeless population of tents springing up everywhere of you know violent scuffles confrontations between people who are on drugs or having other problems or having mental illness problems and in, in theory I would support or, or you know want to deal with these things in a non criminal way in a non punitive way in a get resources kind of way but it, it seems like a really daunting challenge to to get a lot of these people to be on board with with those treatment options that they that they will they a significant number choose no they choose the the socially undesirable outcome and then we're just well what what can we do i don't i don't know that i'm not persuaded at all that like lack of funding or lack of of will is is the issue it is just not working uh I think that this is a popular misconception uh, that homeless people do not want help or resources. First of all, we can't say that it's a matter, it's not a matter of lack of funding or lack of resources when in the midst of, you know, sweep this, these large sweeps and getting rid of the encampments and pushing them out of the subway station, they've cut the Department of Homeless Services budget by over $600 million. So clearly there is a deliberate effort here not to provide them with the resources they need. Further, if you actually speak into these outreach groups and the homeless people that are speaking up, because there are many, many homeless advocates like the homeless hero in New York City, and they talk about it, they're turned away. There was a woman who lost uh, all of her possessions and where she sleeps when they destroyed this, uh, destroyed the encampments recently. She tried to go to a detox center and she was turned away because they said she needs a mailing address for a bed. And that's similar, so they get into similar problems trying to get into the shelters. How is a homeless person gonna have a mailing address? So it's not that these people are just choosing to do drugs or that they don't want help. They're being turned away actively. So that's what's happening there. And Amy, I think, you know, obviously, you know, mental health people, me mental health help for people is a good thing. But I think blaming this upsurge in homelessness on mental health, it kind of lacks some, uh, it's, it's not a satisfying explanation because the mental health problems in our country have been, you know, fairly stable over the last several decades. You know, I think... Oh. Actually, I think it became much worse, especially during the lockdown, e even for people who own homes or or rent. I, yeah. uh, and, and, and so, you know, but I, yes, I actually rent. I do that, blame that's, that's the fact. That, yeah. Well, I, I do blame the fact that money is is not being uh, put as a priority into facilities that are needed um, in this area. Because let's go back to Las Vegas during the lockdown. What was deemed essential? The building of the Allegiant Football Stadium for the Raiders. Okay, uh, so that cost $1.9 billion, and $750 million of that was actually from taxpayer dollars and, and uh, municipal bonds. So when there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, no, yeah, sure. ab ab absolutely. But, and I think that, yeah, there has been an uptick in kind of uh, mental health problems as a result of the pandemic, but not the types of severe mental health illness that, that you see on the streets. So I really think it's more about just the, the cost of housing. That's, yes, yes. that's, that's the thing that has really changed over the last several years. I mean, I mean, you know, you know, this population a lot more intimately than I do. What's, what's your assessment of what's changed in recent years? I agree. I think the lockdown is relevant when you think about people losing their jobs, people losing their businesses, people being evicted from their homes. That obviously has a direct correlation on the homeless population. But no, I don't think it's exclusively mental health is to blame. I think it has something to do with the fact that New York City has an astronomical cost of living. Even what we call affordable housing is not affordable. If you actually look at the affordable housing lottery market in New York City, they're more expensive. They are far more expensive and the income requirements are more expensive than what I as a lawyer currently makes or affords in paying my current rent, let alone homeless people and people that are below the poverty line in New York City. So I think the lockdown is relevant, but not for mental health purposes, but because of poverty. When we think of homelessness, the first thing we should think of is people cannot afford housing.
Right. Anyway. I mean, I'm just I'm just yeah. quickly googling here though. Like we got DC got 20 million, 19 million in uh, COVID stimulus money to to help the homeless. There's a there's a five billion dollar program nationwide. There's a 350 million dollar program locally. Like there's hundreds of millions of dollars being spent on this problem, even just in DC. And it's not, and, and yet it, the pro, it's more out of control than ever. It's just, it's just government incompetence. It's just maybe it's it doesn't. Yeah, a lot of people. It's disregard. That it's it's disregard. Yeah. yeah, it's disregard. Yeah. You know, they've been allowed to perpetuate this myth that, you know, they're trying to protect New Yorkers. And even just saying that protecting New Yorkers from homeless people excludes them as though they are not New Yorkers themselves. So that is problematic in the first place. But they present it as though they're protecting New Yorkers. That's why they're ridding homeless people of the street. You're not getting rid of them. They're still there. They have nowhere to be. So you, you still have homeless people. So what it really is, is robbing uh, Manhattan and rich, rich New Yorkers of what they deem as an eyesore, because it's not it's not a coincidence that there are homeless people all all around New York City and every borough, but the vast majority of where these swoops are occurring are in Manhattan. Just like when the pandemic happened and they were housing uh, homeless people in the hotels and the empty, nice, vacant buildings, and then you saw rich Manhattan people rally to have them removed. So this has nothing to do with protecting New Yorkers. It have anything to do with safety. It has everything to do with just removing them from our visibility. And additionally, you know, yes, there is uh, millions of dollars being spent and in other places they get stimulus money. But in New York City, what we're looking at is an over $600 million cut to our homeless services. Yeah, and, and Nevada has a surplus actually, Robbie, now that you're talking about the breakdown of all the money that was divvied out to states. And you know, we find that homeless people are actually being, um, they're being shuffled from state to state. Yeah. So then that way you don't have to look at them or else the money's being used to put dividers exactly. on, on bus benches, you know, so that way they can't sleep on them. I mean, that's not the answer either. Yeah. Right. Mm. Right, there's a lot of money not being spent well. Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't. There's a lot of money being spent, a lot of money being spent to hide them from us, right. but not Correct. to give them any help or the resources that they need. Right. Well, Alaim and Amy, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll have more rising right after this.